Hey, what's up, guys? This is the bonus episode of the MMA Talk Show. And this week, yeah, we're speaking to two samurai guys uh, who will be or may not be fighting on the card. But like, we're speaking to Patrick Connors and Matthew Rusniak. Patrick Connors is fighting Frédéric Dubra on this card. Frédéric Dubra, highly touted prospect from Quebec who has been off for three years now coming off of his huge knockout loss to Johnny Baldridge at TKO. He's back. Everybody's super excited for this fight and Pat Connors is a really good and game opponent for Frédéric Dupro. We're speaking a little more to him about this fight and everything else surrounding uh, the preparation and stuff. So we're speaking to Pat Connors and then Matthew Rusniak, who as of now, which is... Sunday, November 7th, that's where I'm recording this intro. Uh, he has not yet been booked for the Samurai card, if you were the two weeks ago, last week, no, last week, yeah. I um, kind of ranted about the, the commission where they, they took every pro debut of the card and uh, Matthew Rusniak was one of the guys faced to, to, to set to fight a pro debut on the card. He was set to fight Alan Gerard on the card. And uh, as of now, I don't know yet if they were able to replace Alan Gerard in that fight. So Matthew Rusniak may or may not be fighting on that card. The matchup we're discussing is not happening, but my man Matthew uh, was really kind enough to, to join me and speak to me. So for sure, even if the matchup's not happening anymore, I'm airing that interview because he's talking about his gym, 2360 punch, and he's offering you guys like the the knowledge on how to, to, to go to the gym and train with him and how it's working to, to, to train with the guys at 360. So I feel like even though the matchup we're discussing is not happening anymore, there were lots of good discussion in that interview with Matthew. And since he was kind enough to, to give up some time and join me, uh, I'll for sure air his interview. I, I'm not doing my, my buddy Matthew wrong here for sure, man. The guy was kind enough to join us. So, man, I'm airing it even though it might be a little outdated as of now. So that's the bonus episode really quick intro quick episode to only two interviews they're kind of quick but man i i needed to make some ways for the guys man they took their time to speak to me so i'm taking uh, some time to air it even though it's a bonus episode we've got so much interviews so much fights coming up man it's super exciting period for canadian mma and two of these guys will be in action we're happy for it and we're happy to speak to them so have a nice episode guys and uh, enjoy the podcast we'll see each other next week with some more of these interviews again support for the mma talk show is brought to you by manscape the best in men's below the waist grooming manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels and they just launched their fourth generation trimmer the lawnmower 4.0 you are that right the 4.0 join over 4 million men worldwide who trust manscape with this exclusive offer for you that's 20 percent off and free worldwide shipping with the code mma talk at manscape.com just imagine shaving with a sleek well-designed and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bedroom i'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0 and i'm blown away by the performance the craftsmanship and details on the 4.0 are next level We've all witnessed horror stories in the bathroom where blood, sweat, and tears were shed while trying to maintain decent enough grooming for your little homies down there. And as men, there's only one part of our body that we never want to see bleed, and that's our balls. It happened to me more than once, but not anymore because with the help of Manscaped, I can now shave in peace and with the confidence that I will not shed blood while trying to keep my balls presentable. I can now be confident that whatever situations life puts me through, my balls will be well-groomed, in perfect shape, and ready to help me power through it all. Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. I now feel confident shaving my boys. This upgrade trimmer also includes a multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock. It also gives you the ability to turn the 4000k led spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave the lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim to additional guard lengths with sizes one through four did i even mention the wireless charging 
His new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help your battery last longer. Man, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, yeah, you've been doing it wrong. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge you at all, but no person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. It's time to get your own ball air and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice smooth boys. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MMA Talk at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code MMA Talk. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. What's up, everybody? We're back with Patrick Connors. Hey. What's up, my man? Uh, not much. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Yep. Uh, I'm really happy to have you on today to, to discuss your next fight, man. You're going to yeah. be fighting in Quebec uh, for mm -hmm. Samurai MMA against Frédéric Dupre. Uh, I don't know if you know, but much anticipated fight. Uh, Fred for Dupre sure. is a guy that, man, we've been following around here for a while and he's going to be back and you're a good opponent. So everybody's excited about that. And uh, I want to know uh, how you were feeling about that stuff and shit. So I, that's why I yeah. wanted to have you on. So how's life, man? Life's good. Life's good. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I, I know exactly what I'm getting into. Fred, Fred's, he's the, he's the guy in Montreal, right? He's, uh, he's, he's been fighting on those amateur shows. This is my first time coming over to Quebec to fight. Uh, I fought in Ottawa before, but I'm, I'm going into enemy territory, as they say, and uh, I have to spoil the party. Yes, for sure, man. So uh, you said you heard about Fred. What, what do you think? Uh, have you ever seen a fight of him? What do you think about him? You know, I, I recognized him from, I think we both fought on a Heroes Combat League card before. And so the name rang a bell. And uh, I just looked him up, looked at his fights. Solid competitor, solid competitor. He's he's strong everywhere, like myself. And uh, that's what gets me excited, is a good challenge. Mm -hmm. For sure. How long do you expect this to last? Because, man, this guy has never went more than 51 seconds as a pro. So, it win yeah, he or loss. Win or loss. He comes so. out, yeah, he comes out hot, right? But um, he might be rethinking that with his last fight. I haven't seen it. I know he got knocked out in the first round. So maybe he's going to try to play a more patient game. I, I don't know what he's going to do. And I, I don't suppose I know just by watching his fights. All I know is what I do. And what I do is I go out and I perform. I, I see the man standing in front of me and I react accordingly. Mm -hmm. Sure, man. You might you might be right about that one because it was a, a really really bad knockout. To be honest, yeah. like he, he just didn't get like touched a little. He got super knocked out in that fight. I was scared to be honest. I was scared. It yeah. it took like a a minute and a half, two minutes to, to really come back and stand up. I, at a point, I was like, man, like, would you please wake up, please? Yeah, I, I know, don't like that shit right that, now. Right? Yeah, you want to see. Both guys okay at the end of the fight, always, right? It's it's a beautiful sport, but it's savage, and, and uh, it's no, it's not just a game. It's not like another sport. It's a fight. Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, you're gonna be a guy that wants to but to bounce back to. Uh, let, let, let's speak about oh. it a little. I know it's probably not really fun to talk about that, but uh, oh, yeah. you're kind of yeah. you're kind of on a little skid right now. You had some tough matchups that mm. uh, you, you didn't win recently, so I know it must not be pleasing to to look at your record with all the potential that you have and see a a 500 yeah. record right now. So uh, mm -hmm. how about that, man? You know, I I take fights uh very seriously so it, it hurts to lose it's it's not like i'm um saying oh well I'll give it my best shot no i take this very seriously i i'm really i'm thinking about my preparation but i'm also i'm testing myself every time i go out there i i want to be challenged i want those hard fights because i want to move up levels and you know what the stardom that's nice and the win streaks those are nice but I, I'm trying to up my game. I'm trying to be the best at this that I can be. And so those tough fights, they, they didn't go my way. But you know what? I'm, I'm learning and I'm getting better. And uh, that's what matters to me the most. And now for sure. And like there's a, 
a common thread too in, in those fights that uh, basically you you lost by submission so that that mm -hmm. gives you kind of a of a clue on what the To, to really improve in your game because like yeah. you you had your moments in, in, in these fights too uh, at some point especially your last one i felt like it was a good day it was a good contest to, to be honest it was a tough matchup really really good opponent yeah, yeah. man you it went super far to him in fifth round mm -hmm. and stuff yeah it was like 24 minutes it's the longest i've ever fought uh great experience great experience and um uh my records three and three in pro MMA and I've had uh, 13 amateur fights now. So I, I have the experience and I've seen a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of looks and uh, I'm like young in this game, but I'm, I'm pretty experienced. I know, I know where my strengths lie and uh, where my weaknesses are. And uh, I just keep improving, keep improving. That's all I can do um, with Fred You know, coming off a knockout loss, uh, being a very good grappler like he is, a lot of submission wins. Um, you know, it seems like he would want to take me down, uh, but maybe he wants a he has a point to prove. You know, you never know. You just you go out and you fight with your game plan, and uh, that's what I'll, I'll be doing. I'll just uh, I I. I love doing this. Yeah, for sure, man. And do you feel and that's uh, why I keep returning after the three fight loss? I, I'm I'm still here. Yeah, no, for sure, man. It's important to to, to, to keep on going and stuff. Um, uh, what I wanted to know: Do you feel like your length? Is a, is a good advantage for you in that fight, especially like you say, guy really aggressive grappler. Maybe coming back from a knockout has something to prove. You, you're a re you're a real tall guy for the division. Good length. Uh, you're you're good at using that length too. Do you feel that that can be one of your main advantages in that fight? Absolutely. My my striking is dangerous. I just haven't had a fight where I've gotten longer than 30 seconds in the fight before someone's trying to take me down. So it, if If he wants to strike, what well, I'm I'm down. But most likely, he's gonna shoot. Uh, like, most likely, you know. And so that's I I have to prepare prepare myself from that, and I keep working on sharpening all my tools. Yeah, no, for sure. And let's say he shoots you, and you're able to defend all that. It's gonna be pretty satisfying to uh, after, yeah. like you said, that that skid and stuff to just come out and be dominant with your grappling and that can lead you to, to, to maybe more striking or more op opportunities from Absolutely. There. Yeah. It's with these last few fights. Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of fighters have this feeling where they work, they work on their skills and they have this ever growing skill set, And uh, sometimes you don't get to show it. So um, I, I just want to be able to perform what I'm crafting, right? I'm, I'm creating this, uh, this art, this dance, and I just want to be able to show it. And so I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, I'm glad that Fred and I get to do this. Uh, I have no ill will towards Fred, but I, I want to show what I've got. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, let's talk about the training a little bit. Where, where do you train at? Uh, who are your, your your main partners and how, how's it going? Because I know it, it's tough out here, Quebec, Ontario. They, they don't really yeah. want us to train. It's getting better, but I, I want to know how, how's it going. Yeah, the, this past year, two years, you're right. It's It's been tough and um, there's been a lot of uncertainty with uh, where we can train, what we can do. Um, I... I took a turn on this last uh, fight. When I decided to take this fight, I wanted to change my training up and I wanted to take a different direction, um, feel something out. So I contacted my first amateur MMA opponent, uh, Fred Stonehouse. And uh, I have a lot of respect for Fred um, as a competitor, as a martial artist and uh, how he carries himself outside of the cage. I just have a lot of respect for that guy. And so I reached out to him and asked him if he could uh, head my training camp or be one of my, my main coaches for this. 
Um, and the response I got just, uh, it, it was so heartwarming because he, he's an authentic guy and um, the response just, it really, it meant a lot because he was, he was all about it. And he said, come on to Ottawa. So I did, I moved over to Ottawa and I'm working with Fred. I'm, I'm moving around with some different guys in this area. I want to be close to Montreal. I'm going to fight here a few times and uh, I, I'm just laying some new roots and let's see where it ha- let's see where it goes you know with this one i'm i'm excited because i feel like there's no distractions nothing i'm just i'm in it for this you know so i'm ready to go <coughs> oh shit. and shout out to fred stonehouse man yeah. great guy and really 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 tough grapplers in that gym too huh oh yeah Tough everything, tough everything. They're complete martial artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, really coming from a good camp and stuff. So I, I, I'm glad you, I'm glad you found them back, man. That's gonna be a, a good add to your game. I feel. Yeah, like. it's like Rocky and Apollo. <laughs> exactly, man. So, <laughs> um, man, before before I let you go, I'm really happy that we had we had the chance to speak a little bit about your fight. But before I let you go, uh, man, I, I'm gonna leave you with the the final word, man. Anything you want to yeah, say, well, yeah. people you you want to shout out and stuff, uh, I, I'll leave you with the with the final word here, my man. Yeah. Okay. Um, for anyone looking forward to watching me and Fred fight, uh, you will not be disappointed. I've seen, I've seen Fred come out. He comes out like a madman. And you know what? Game recognize game, you know? And me and Fred, we're going to go in there. It's going to be a war. You're going to want to check it out. So thank you. Oh, yeah, man. I'm super excited for that fight, man. Frederick Dupre, yeah. Patrick Connors is going to be great. Don't miss that shit. Don't miss any fights on that yeah, card. Man. But mm-hmm. don't miss that one. It's going to pr- probably be the last one before the title fights too. So if you're not in your seat for that fight... You fucked up, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, my Thank man. You. It was a pleasure. Con- Patrick pleasure. Connors, everybody. We're going to see each other on the 19th. And uh, after that, anytime, if you got something on your mind, anything you want to say, just hit me up. Always got a spot for you on the podcast, my man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It was Patrick a pleasure. Connors, everybody. Thank you, right. man. What's up, everybody? We're back with another guest in action. November 19th, Samurai, the great comeback. It's been a while. Matthew Rusniak, what's hey. up, man? Merci, Fever. It's good. Uh, it's good, man. I'm, I'm good. Training hard. I can't wait, man. I'm fucking excited. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, what's up with you, man? It's been a while. I know you, you've been uh, training a lot, doing some grappling for fight quests before the pandemic, but it's been a while since we've seen you in the MMA cage, man. What's up with you? Yeah, man. I uh, after I got sent to TKO, I had a I had an injury right after. It was uh, it was always like that. Whenever you're training for the biggest fight of your life, you end up getting an injury. And it was uh, I had a getting, I had a concussion, and uh, I took some time off. And then uh, well, some time off, I opened the gym. I opened TriStar West Island. I opened 360 Punch. So life kind of took over a little bit. But uh, man, I missed the fighting too much, bro. I missed it all too much. So. I, uh, I always kept training. I always kept training even when I was off, even when I was recovering. And um, I won the fight, quest, uh, the fight Quest Grappling Championship in middleweight just because I, I, was, I was always doing jiu-jitsu, especially because it didn't involve any striking. I was, uh, I was doing a lot of grappling on my off time. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, I was like, you know what? Everything is going good with the gym. We're just starting to try Star West Island with my partner, Xavier Alawi. And I was like, you know what? If it's going to be any time, it's going to be now. You know, I'm 29 years old, and uh, that's it. It's now or never. For sure. What made you want to come back? Is it Samurai when they came through with a promotion in Quebec? Or, or, or you always add the thought to do a fight wherever, wherever it would be? I always had the thought. Um, so I, uh, I, I, I have a, a couple of contacts. And when uh, Jeremy Rubin was looking for fights for me in the States... Uh, if I didn't fight for Samurai, I was going to go fight for CFFC. Um, a couple of the guys that, that they gave me the names already went on Contender Series. So I was um, it, it was either going to be one or the other. It's more along the lines of I wanted to fight in Samurai. Just so happened to just so happened to open their doors and Daniel Lafon ended up uh, putting it in all together. And uh, it's looking good, man. Ah, for sure, man. I'm excited, man. You, you just can't imagine how excited I am because like... Yeah. Uh, you you were there. You saw all the 
all the things that we had to go through to, to have this event and now just to, to have the the date the arena the tickets on sale people are buying tickets and it's looking good if you, you're looking at the news and all that shit it, it, it's not looking like they're gonna shut us back down once again so fuck man it's gonna happen yeah. for real this time and it's yeah. just so exciting to finally get just, the, the the show back on and, and it's really really good it's um man i i i had people from the gym from my gym go to they, they went online to try to buy tickets and when they're trying to go on uh the olympia theater website there's like barely any tickets left like it's almost a sold out show too so it's uh it's looking good man it's gonna be a really fun uh, return to pro mma in the in the province i'm looking forward to it oh uh, yeah daniel has been telling me that he's having some problems with the tickets but like good problems like not yeah. being sure he's going to be able to give more tickets to fighters that one because they're selling out so quick and i fucking like, love it i love it crazy it's gonna yeah. be great too i just uh just watch the boxing card there just mm -hmm. to, to, to have a look at the at the the, the, the place how it how it's set up and I think it's going to work out pretty well because I remember the Olympia from... I went there once when I was super young. I went to a Rise Against show at the Olympia. Okay. The, man, but I was super young, so I, I don't quite remember how it's set up and all. But uh, by looking at the boxing card, uh, it, it seems to run pretty smooth, really, to be honest. I think it's going to run smoothly. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. So I, I was only... The, yeah. Yeah, so you're gonna be fighting Alan Giraud. What do you know about Ooh. this guy? I don't know much, man. I uh, I uh, I saw some video. He's he's a guy who's he swings, you know, tough guys. Uh, what what can you say about guys from Quebec? You know, it's the most of the time they're the same. It's it's uh, wild guys. You got to watch out for the right hand. Um, I went on his profile. I saw that he he trains. He likes to strike, so he's probably gonna want to strike. Uh, he, he fought a guy that I know, uh, Zachary Powell. Um, I, I just saw a couple of fights, you know, it, it's, uh, at the end of the day, it, it, I'm, I'm not changing my game plan. I'm not changing my fighting style at all for Alan Gerald. I'm, I'm, I, I saw a video on him. The guy's good, man. You know, if, if you're an amateur champion, you're an amateur champion. He's the NFL, the, uh, NFL champion at uh, welterweight, I think. And man, you, you, you can't be shit if you have a, if you have a title, it is what it is. You know, you, you have to fucking beat some people to get that title. So I'm going to treat him like any other opponent. I'm gonna, uh, you, you got to respect the guy's skills, but no, man, this is my time, bro. I'm, I've been in this for way too long. Yeah, man. So you, you've been there for a while, for sure. 2016, your last fight. The guy, I don't know if he even had an amateur fight back then. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Dude, my first fight was in a fucking fight quest in Laval. It was a fucking illegal. It was illegal for me to be in there. Dude, I've been doing this for too long. It's Alan Giraud's got a big set of balls on him, and he's and he's very talented and it's good. But um, no, man, no, this this ain't it. Yeah, for sure, because uh, I think it may be the fight that he won the belt in Quebec City. Uh, he fought. He fought a guy that I that I used to train with. A guy that came from Plattsburgh to train mm -hmm. with us uh, because uh, our I think our, our jujitsu gym was a little better than the one he had in Plattsburgh. So he was coming to do his jujitsu with us. And uh, to be honest, that guy was he was good man. Like big purple belt from the USA, kind of wrestling style. He didn't even wrestle in school, but I don't know, man. Americans they're just wrestlers somehow. Yeah. So no, and, and he was good and he fought uh Alan. I think it was for the belt. I don't know, but it was like a recent amateur fight. And to be to be honest, I was quite surprised by by the improvements he had made because I've seen Alan in his earlier amateur fights kind of get dominated on the ground, and he was really able to, to, to work better in that way. But in another sense, like man, he, he, I hope he's ready for your ground game because it's kind of a uh, well, another thing, man. I believe. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's no fucking secret. Like, if I see the takedown, I'm gonna take it. Like, like for sure, you know. And I'm I'm a brown belt and uh, I'm I'm a grappling champion in Fight Quest. So it's like, I, I I won the I won the grappling belt in 30 seconds with the guillotine. So it's like if if I see something, I'm gonna take it. You know, for sure. But uh, 
Um, 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 th there's some guys that you game plan for and some not. The last guy that I fought in 2016 was Michael Trumbly. This guy was one of the most decorated, is one of the most decorated jiu-jitsu practitioners to ever be born from Canada. Um, this guy with Abu Dhabi, he's a fucking, he's a beast. The, a guy like this, you got to really game plan for it. Um, because he has a very specific skill set. With Gerard, it's a little bit different because it's uh, you, you can tell Gerard does have a game plan, but he'll he'll let the um, he'll let the fight get the better of him. Like he looks like a guy who really just likes to fight, you know. So that being said, it's 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 not hard to game plan for a guy like this. But I feel a lot of the time, just let the fight happen. Just go out there, see whose skill set is better, and if you let if that's what it is, then then I'm I'm very confident I'm gonna win. Yeah, for sure. Because like you've been saying, he, he definitely like likes to fight and he likes to do a little of, of everything too. He's not like, he likes to strike, but he's going to go for things here and there. And when you got guys like that, it, it's true that it's it's tougher to game plan for. But in another way, since the guy's kind of willing to do everything, it's it may be easier to, to push the fight towards the way you want it to be fought contrary to a guy who like a guy that's uniquely a striker he's not want to grapple he's not going to want to grapple with you at all he's not going to be willing to even engage in the in the grappling sphere and you uh, you have to find a way to put your hands on him but for a guy that's more willing to do a little of everything uh, i guess it, it's a like you said it may be just a little tougher to the game plan and just let let the fight happen like you like you said but uh, well, that's it. Talk about your gym, man, because I see you guys have been doing really well, and I'm I'm really happy for for you and Xavier. It's it's good stuff in on the West Island. So talk to talk to us about the gym. Tell the people that don't know like what it is, where it's at. How can they reach out and come train with man some of the better mixed martial artists in the province? I appreciate that, man. Uh, 360 punch. We look, man. Uh, uh, your whole life, we we always hear about this MMA fighters. We're like. All of our friends and family will come. They say, hey, we want to train MMA. Like, I love what you do, but I don't want to get punched in the face. Or I want to learn how to box. Or I want to learn how to do Muay Thai, but I don't want to get hurt. So what me and Xavier did is that we opened the gym called 360 Punch. And it's you train like fighters. So it's very hard strength and conditioning. It's um, uh, it, it's uh, we, we do a lot of emphasis in terms of our cardio on boxing. So you learn how to box. We do a lot, a lot, a lot of fitness and conditioning. But you don't need to know how to fight and all the boxing technique. It's very basic. It's, it's some on your first lesson. Everybody learns how to box. Everybody knows how to learn all the six punches, your straight punches, your hooks, your uppercuts. Everybody learns that on the first day in class. You, we have CFL players in class next to uh housewives, you know, it, it's, it's an intense class. And, um, we have a super, super good team. We have super high level strength and conditioning coaches. We have Chris Pomie, who is the head strength and conditioning coach. This guy was, uh, the coach for ufc fighters cfl players nhl players it's uh it's a very high level team yeah for sure and i see you guys been doing good too with the with everything so I, it's really cool man to see people uh have success w in gyms right now because fuck man they 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 just don't really want us to train and to see <laughs> to see people pulling through and still having success uh, it's really cool it's really cool and you guys deserve it like i've been saying you're really you're a super good mixed martial artist xavier is probably man like top two three in the country i know yeah, he's not fighting sure. right here but man fuck xavier like we two wins and he's in the ufc i hope because the oh, guy's man, really good and he's been good and he's been there for years so yeah he's uh this guy's been on the ufc's roster for for a while actually he was, he was like if it wasn't for his last fight, he would have won. He would have been in the UFC. They would have just gave him the call. But um, yeah, it is what it is, bro. He's I'm I'm very lucky to have a partner like that, and uh, that's a, it's a lot of good things to come. Yep. Who uh, who are your other training partners? Like guys, you you go with the the, the more the most often. Today, I'll I'll give you an example for sparring today. I went with Mandel Nalo. Uh, if you don't know who he is, <laughs> yeah. You'll find out. You'll definitely find out about that guy. Um, I went with Rory McDonald. Uh, you might have heard about him, the Red King. He had a couple of famous fights, yeah. Um, yep. And I went with a lot of the good amateurs that we have at TriStar. A lot of these upcoming amateurs, Charbel, um, Tyler Freeman, a lot of these guys that are really, really good that are just starting to get their, um, uh, their experience under them. And you're going to hear big things about these guys in a few years. Uh, Tyler, isn't he like already a, the, the MFL champ or something like that? 
he I, I think he actually even vacated. I think he made the jump to pro or like he uh, he signed the contract here or there. Um, I, I I think he just made the jump to pro. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting because he's 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 really good. I saw him. Uh, I did some I did some grappling matches here and there at MFL, and uh, I had the chance to see him fight, and I was really impressed by what I saw, man. Him and yeah. and Tommy Tommy Morrison too, man. Did this oh, guy, a man. Beast, bro. Oh man, I, I they, that's the other. Like to be honest, the, the the excluding the main events, the fight I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Really, uh, Maxim Poulain, uh, Guillaume Forcier, because they're both grapplers and they're gonna grapple. And that I do jujitsu. That's what I, I want to see. Some fucking people submit each yeah. other and grapple and roll. So I'm really looking forward to that fight. I'm looking forward to your return a lot too, because uh, it's been a while, man. I, and I really like it. You're a grappler, so for sure I like your style. And I'm really, really looking forward to to, to Tommy's debut. Like really man. looking for that. I feel like it's been years and man, shit. I, I'm speaking to his dad here and there too, and everybody's that that knows Tommy is hyping him up to me and fuck, man. I can't yeah. wait. He's he he's been professional level for quite some time, and um, man, it's he's he, he's gonna make he's gonna make a lot of waves in the sport. You could tell he's when he comes in the gym, he's, he's for especially for his weight. In terms of strength and conditioning, the kid's one of the strongest kids, one of the most powerful kids. He, he he will go just shoulder to shoulder with guys that are 20 pounds heavier than him, lean muscle, not fat guys out there, like lean, lean, muscular guys. He's got a lot of strength, a lot of power, and a lot of speed. It's fucking, it's a tough fight. Tommy's a tough fight. Oh man, I it's, yeah. I'm so hyped for that for that event, man. I can't believe it. just talking about it. I'm getting super hyped, and I just want to be there, man. Can it just be tomorrow, please? <laughs> I know, man. I know, and uh, uh, it's it's crazy because I'm uh, at, at TriStar. We see a lot of the guys. Like you asked me who I was training with before. Like it's funny because even, even the the training session before, I was sparring with McZufar, and I was sparring with just like a whole bunch of the guys on the card. And it's like it's cool, you know. We get to see everybody in the gym, and I'm like, fuck, man, like. This feels like almost like the the golden era of, of Quebec MMA around like 2008, 2009, 2010, where like you'd, you'd walk on the mats and half the mat was in the UFC, you know, um, like honestly, mostly pre-COVID too, because even 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 before COVID, it was it was the same thing. And it's it's um it's nice. It's nice to see that again. Yeah, for sure, man. And like people are so good. Like you say, like you've got Mixfall, Alex Morgan, they're good, but we know, yeah, they they've got the record, yeah. they got like the street cred, they're close to the UFC. But man, you've got guys like Frédéric Dubra that most people don't remember, and he, he's absolutely amazing. You got guys like Tommy that nobody has seen, that it's pretty good too. You got guys like you that people don't really remember too. There's newer fans that are just tuning in now, and they're like, "Oh, this guy fought," but I I don't really know. And man, they're gonna be up to to to, to something, man, on, on November 19th for sure. Yeah, they're gonna get gonna... a tree. It's gonna be some crazy shit, dude. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. fucking 100 percent, dude. Uh, man, it's the, the fun thing about this, like, uh, I've never been in a boring fight in my life. You can look at my record and you can see that, uh, you, I don't think any of the other people on the card have, like even through the amateurs I'm looking at, I was just looking at the whole card. I'm like, dude, I think this card probably has the least amount of decision fighters out of any card in Quebec, like recent history yeah. that I remember. Uh, for sure. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. And like, y y you know, that like you said crazy shit's gonna happen like all over the card but oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, you man. can feel it for sure man I, I just can't wait the other guy man fuck i even yanis has all man yeah man that guy, even yanis is coming back that, that guy man he, 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 i think it's been almost as long as tommy since he, he's due to turn pro man so yeah guys. and uh yanis is he's, he's looking strong he's looking fucking powerful i was uh on Saturday, we actually did a round together at uh, Tristar for us was doing a Shark Tank. So we had three guys in the middle, and uh, the um, we had a, we had probably like twenty guys on the mat. And there's three guys in the middle, and everybody rotates on them. So if you're on the mat, you're staying in for around twelve minutes nonstop. Every minute is a new guy. And uh, when I was in the middle, when I, when when I was doing one of my rounds, I got Yanis on one of my rounds, and we're we're a few weight classes away. He's one forty five, I'm one seventy five. This guy fucking hits hard, bro. This this guy, this he's a beast, bro. You gotta you gotta watch out for his fight. He's a fucking beast. Oh man, 
Fuck, I can't wait. So before I let you go, I, I, I leave you with the final word, man. Every, anything you want to say, people, you want to shout out anything, that, that the floor is yours, my man. I, I let you. Man, shout out to TriStar Gym. Shout out to Faraz Zahabi, Eman Zahabi, Mandel, Xavier, all the crew from uh, from TriStar. Shout out to 360 Punch, Chris Pamir, Pete, Java, James, everybody. Um I said, if anybody wants to come train with me, come train with me at 360 Punch. Come try a week for free on me. Yeah, for sure. And I'm going to tag uh, the, the gym and, and I'll, I'll post like on on Facebook and on the YouTube and stuff. So people, they're, they're going to be able to just click on the link and direct, directly like hit you up either on, uh, on Facebook or Instagram. I'm, I'm going to make sure people get the get the chance to, to hit you up really easily man because like you said it's it's a real cool concept to just be there trained not because it's true people like people like us we're crazy we don't care like getting it and stuff but some people don't really like it and it, it's really cool to be able to to train martial arts a, a different way with, with you guys that are super super competent and to, 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 to teach all people uh, about that stuff so thanks a lot my man I hope we get to do this again. You, maybe, maybe after the fight, uh, if um, everything went according to plan, I have a little celebration on the podcast. Anything you, or uh, like anytime you have something on your mind, something you want to say, you can always hit me up. I got a spot for you. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. We're going to have the conversation after that fight. That's for sure. Yeah, let's do it, my man. Thanks a lot. Ciao, bro. Bye.